Hello, my dear students of BSc first semester. So I am Sarabhip Kaur Situ here. So today we will discuss the topic that is compound pendulum. Compound pendulum. So first of all, what is a compound pendulum? So compound pendulum is just a rigid body, rigid body of any shape, capable of oscillating freely. Capable of oscillating freely in a vertical plane about a horizontal axis passing through it. Yeah, uh, like this. If this is a rigid body, this 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 is a rigid body. This point is point of suspension that is equal to S. This point is S, and this is the where mass whole mass is. This is point G, center of gravity point. Now this rigid body is oscillating about a horizontal, about a vertical plane along a horizontal axis. Means along a horizontal, along this point, about a horizontal axis. Clear? Yeah? And when it oscillates, or when we displace this uh, rigid body uh, through a small angle that is theta, the rigid body is at this point, this line. This is a rigid body when it displays from a small angle that is theta. So now this point shifted to here. This is G dash. This is G dash. Clear? Yeah? So this angle, small angle is theta, and uh, G goes to G dash. And when we join this point to this, this uh, say this point is P. Say this point is P. Now weight is here. So whole mass is here. So here is a force mg. Clear? Down in downward direction. Now at point d dash. Now another force equivalent to this force is also acting at point s. That is a force of reaction. So force of reaction that is also uh, acting, but it acts at point s. So mg. Now these two forces equal and opposite. These two forces forms a forms a couple, and the moment of couple, restoring couple, the moment of the moment of restoring couple, restoring couple, that is equal to the moment of restoring couple in clockwise direction, or we can say in decreasing theta. Restoring means the uh, they want that the body comes to a uh, mean position or about this point. So in a restoring of in decreasing theta. So that is equal to that's why there is minus sign minus mg plus force. The that is mg into perpendicular distance. So what is the perpendicular distance between these two? That is g dash p. That is g dash p. Now what is uh, right here? g dash p perpendicular distance. And what is the value of this g dash p? If this, the length of the pendulum is l. The length of the pendulum is l. Means s g is also l and s g dash that is also l. s uh, g dash that is equal to l and s g is also l. So if this is l, this is angle theta, then g dash p is l sin theta. l sin theta. So g dash p that is equal to minus m g L sine of theta. L sine of theta. Now we know that if I is the if I is the moment of inertia, moment of inertia about an axis, about an axis passing through this point. Okay, about an axis. Passing through S that is equal to I and uh, angular acceleration that is equal to double derivative because theta is the angular displacement. So angular acceleration is double derivative of theta with respect to T scale. So this is angular acceleration. Then torque from this according to definition I rub it the definition. So angular acceleration into I that is equal to tau, tau is equal to I into alpha, angular acceleration is alpha that is equal to I into double derivative of theta with respect to T. Now 
now this is also top this is also top and this is also top clear yeah? so this is equation number first and this is equation number second so when we uh, equal these two equations so minus mg l sin theta that is equal to i into double derivative of theta with respect to t square so this is two equation when we equal two equations now uh, take both terms in one side take both terms in one side this is t square so what you get minus mg l sin theta here yeah? so when we take it one side this plus i double derivative of theta with respect to t square that is equal to zero so divide the whole equation now first of all sin theta theta is very very small the angle theta is very very small if theta is very very small then we can take sin theta that is equal to theta so put here uh, sin theta instead of sin theta we can put here theta so when i rub it here and put here theta so mg l theta plus i double derivative of theta with respect to t square that is equal to 0 now divide the whole equation with mg l with mg l what you get this is theta um, no don't divide the equation with mg l because we want the differential equation in terms of theta so i take this term first i double derivative of theta with respect to t plus m g l theta this is equal to 0 so we want the differential in terms of theta so we have to remove this i from this term so to remove i from this term we divide the whole equation by i so when we divide the whole equation by i so i goes here and here is i so this is the differential equation in terms of theta now compare this equation with the equation of simple harmonic motion and that equation is double derivative of x with respect to t square plus omega naught square x that is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 now when we compare this is a differential equation in terms of x this is a differential equation in terms of theta when we compare these two equations what you get you get yes this is theta this is x so omega naught square that is equal to mgl upon i so omega naught square that is equal to mgl upon i mg upon i so it means omega naught square omega naught square that is equal to omega naught is equal to mgl upon i mg l upon i so mg l upon i this is omega naught and under root and under root so this is our omega naught now when you want this is omega naught is the angular frequency omega naught is the angular frequency and if we want the simple frequency we put the value of omega naught the value of omega naught is 2 pi f naught omega naught is 2 pi f naught f naught this is the angular frequency this is simple frequency this is equal to m g l upon i or we can say from this f naught is equal to f naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi m g l upon i m g l upon i this is the frequency uh, f naught is equal to m g now we want the time period because uh, in every pendulum we want the time period for a oscillation so to find out the time period we take the reciprocal of frequency when we take the reciprocal of frequency what you get or you can say uh, t is equal to 1 over f naught and that is equal to 2 pi under root of i over mg l i over mg l now what is i i is the moment of inertia about an axis passing through s about a horizontal axis here yeah. so now according
according to theorem of parallel axis according to theorem of parallel axis yes according to theorem of parallel axis parallel this is parallel parallel axis this i i is equal to ig plus ml square and what is ig ig means ig or you can say i ig little you know ig so ig means ig is the moment of inertia about an axis which is parallel to the given axis but passing through g about an axis which is parallel to the given axis but passing through g and ml square you know this is l so this is moment of inertia is ml square so ig plus ml square this is equal to ig that is equal to m k square and what is k k is radius of gyration radius of gyration you have studied the radius of gyration in plus 1 so m k square plus m l square so this is i now we put here the value of i when you put here the value of i you get the time period so time period t is equal to 2 pi under root of i that is equal to m k square plus m l square divided by m g l m g l so m is common from denominator and denominator so that is equal to 2 pi m cancelled you get k square what is k k is radius of gyration and l is the length of the pendulum so k square plus this distance l from s to g so k square plus l square upon g l and take l upward so you get 2 pi 2 pi under root of k square upon l plus l square upon l is l divided by g so this is the a time period for uh, compound pendulum and this is just like same the simple pendulum in simple pendulum so from here the length of this compound pendulum that is equal to if when we compare this result with the simple pendulum then l in this case this l is equal to k square by l plus l clear so this is all about the uh, compound pendulum and the center of oscillation point and center of suspension point they are interchangeable in the case of compound pendulum so a uh, compound pendulum is used to find the value of g we can also find the value of g with the help of simple pendulum but in the simple pendulum we assume that the spring which we bob bob is uh, a spring with bob yes this is a simple pendulum and this uh, we take this is a massless this is massless and whole mass is concentrated here at here which is not possible clear yeah? so because when we uh, when this pendulum vibrates this um, length of the thread or spring increases clear yeah? so or uh, there are another discrepancies in this so to remove the discrepancies in a simple pendulum another pendulum compound pendulum comes so this is used to find the value of g when we we know the value of the time period for an oscillation and all the values and we can find out the values of g thank you